Hello language learners, using the subtitles to learn a language. What's the answer? Is it okay? Is it not okay? Is it okay for the subtitles to be in English? Do they have to be in the language? There are a lot of people who ask this and there's probably a lot of different opinions. I'm going to share with you not only my opinion about this, but also how to use subtitles to learn a foreign language using things that you already have or can get for free. That being said, in my opinion, should you use subtitles to learn a foreign language? Yes. Absolutely. When you're first training your ears to understand the language that you're learning and you don't allow yourself subtitles, you're crippling yourself, you're handicapping yourself. You have the ability to read either English or the language you're learning, so there's absolutely nothing in the world wrong with using that ability. The other question, what language should the subtitles be in? In my opinion, the subtitles should be in the language that you're learning. You should have a decent enough vocabulary and understanding of the language you're learning before you try to understand a TV show or a video on YouTube or something like that. If you go into a video or a movie or something not knowing the language at all, there is nothing that can help you. You, you need to have some sort of base level before you can do this. I always suggest using the language you're learning because it's so easy to spend that time that you should be watching the show just reading it. Reading the subtitles, not really listening, not really paying attention. At least that's my experience. If you don't experience that yourself with subtitles and you find it more helpful for you to use English subtitles when you're training your ear, by all means. Don't let me tell you that what works for you is wrong because it's not. I always think that using the, the foreign language subtitles is a great way not only to listen, to practice your listening skills, but also practice your reading skills. I mean, you're hitting two skills with one stone. That's how the phrase goes, right? You really just can't lose, in my opinion. Whichever way you go about it, how do you go about it? It's not as difficult as you may think. If you think it's difficult, it's because you don't have the resources that are available to you. And, well, I am about to give you those resources. I'm going to talk about two different things. I'm going to talk about Netflix and I'm going to talk about YouTube. Everybody and their mother has access to Netflix and YouTube. The resources that I'm going to share with you in this video are going to help you find content with subtitles that you can use to learn a language. And to show you what I mean, let's go to my computer. My dog is sleeping really loudly, do you hear that? I tend to like to use a kid's Netflix just because the content itself is a little simpler and for more adult Netflix, and I'm not talking like X-rated or anything, just, you know, the shows that you probably watch, it takes a certain level of fluency. I forgot to mention this part originally, but with both YouTube and Netflix, for best result, always put your social media, YouTube, Netflix, whatever, into the language that you're learning. That's gonna help you a lot, especially with immersion. I mentioned that in my Instagram stories that uh, keeping my Netflix in Spanish has been amazing for my Spanish fluency. So make sure you do that. You can find Netflix shows a couple of ways. See, I'm already in kids. Let me search here. So you can search for language. I'm gonna start searching for Spanish. Okay, let's see what shows up. You see all of these kids shows, everything's Spanish language. The shows that you find depend completely on the language that you're researching. So let me look for German, for example, German. These are all the German shows, which are, you know, basic, normal, everyday, like Barbie dream house adventures. Let's go in, I'm going to choose, do, 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 do. I don't want to do this in German. Let me go back to Spanish. Nailed it, Mexico. It's promising, right? So let's play it. Well, I already have an extension activated that I haven't talked about just yet, so give me a second with that. But basically, you go into the settings. You can see for audio, we have English, obviously, Spanish, Portuguese, or Spanish, apparently. So there's not a whole lot of options for this show. Um, subtitles though. Subtitles, there are plenty of options. Look at all those subtitles. That's crazy. A lot of languages available. It really just depends on the show what you're looking for. So that's the first key thing to keep in mind when using Netflix to learn a language. You can search Netflix for the language that you're using. Let's talk about this extension, this kind of frankly overwhelming view that I have, but let's talk about it. Right now I'm using the extension language learning with Netflix. It's a free Chrome extension, you just download it, and it does a lot of different things. Let's just play this, let me... 
first you see on this side, these are all of the subtitles. These are, this is a transcript, basically. You can go directly to this line and play it. Yo soy Omar Chaparro y voy a hacer tu dulce compañía. Now you'll see, just when I'm rolled over, it has the translation. I'm Omar Chaparro and I'll be your sweet host. Okay, so it translates it for you. Can highlight the individual words. See, like, voy, go, be, going, ser, make, get on, come to. It's gonna give you basically the direct translation. It's not gonna be able to understand from context what the specific translation is, but it is a help. So another thing that Learning Language with Netflix does is I have it set to auto pause and that does exactly what you think it does. When it gets past a line or a statement or something, it will automatically pause so that you, you can look at the subtitle, look at the transcript and make sure that you understand what's going on. So it stopped there. Let me press play. Vamos a conocer a nuestros pasteleros. Okay, so it paused again. Can turn that off. Me llamo Edis, soy de Monterrey, México, y tengo 33 años. Mi familia cree que tengo... Okay, so it just keeps on going. I like to keep the auto pause on. Um, it's a lot less overwhelming, at least for me, to be able to stop, make sure that I'm all set, and I can continue on with the next line. On the right here, you have all the subtitles. Down here, if you hadn't noticed yet, you have the one line that you're looking at. Mi familia cree que tengo muchos talentos, and it has the translation. What you can also do, roll over tengo, have, be, take, muchos, many, some basic translation. Um, this is a really great way for you to see the language, see the transcripts, see the subtitles, and be able to make sure that you understand every word, <laughs> literally. Let's see if I click. Tengo. Okay. So tengo, there you have some more definitions, other possible translations, usage examples. So these are other examples of this word in this video, which is really helpful. So you can get some more context in case this context just isn't working for you. It has everything highlighted and then it has transcripts, transcripts, translations if you roll over. Okay. Has then so it understands that it's conjugated and it shows you even with the different conjugations okay you can also use these are a bunch of different dictionaries that are available to you just from right here um, I like to use Spanish dict for Spanish even though Spanish dict isn't automatically in language learning with Netflix you can add it so if you go in here LLN language learning with Netflix settings User dictionary URLs. Let me do do, 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 do. SpanishDict.com. I think it's HPPS actually. Okay. Do, do, do. That's in there. Close. Now, let's see if it will use it. Hacer. Hacer. User defined one. Okay. So it opens up SpanishDict but it doesn't automatically go to that word. It's not quite there, unfortunately. Nonetheless, with all of this that you have to yourself, that's a kind of ridiculous amount of context. This goes hard, man. But these are really helpful for getting the words, getting the phrases, the conjugations, and you know, with that immersion, see the language being used all that good stuff. I don't see where you can take these and put them into any sort of flashcards or decks or anything like that. You will have to do that manually, but the content is available to you. You have like an honestly disgusting amount of context to use. And that is using language learning with Netflix to use Netflix to learn a foreign language using subtitles. What if you don't have Netflix or you would prefer to use YouTube? Fortunately, the people behind Language Learning with Netflix, that extension, also has a similar extension for YouTube. It is currently in beta. Maybe by the time you see this video, there may be more options. Nonetheless, 
the Chrome extension Language Learning with YouTube has a ton of options. Side note, in this section I kept saying Language Learning with Netflix. I really meant Language Learning with YouTube. You catch my drift. Here is the YouTube homepage, obviously. I've already typed in how to draw. It's the first thing that came up when I started typing. There are a couple little buttons on the search. Let's talk about those. Right here you have this little down arrow. Let's click that. Select language. Auto detects the source language, the translation language. Let's look at all the languages available with Learning Language with Netflix to translate. And so those. My computer didn't actually pick up on all the languages that showed up, but there are a lot. I'm pretty sure no matter what language you're learning, you can probably find it. I'm going to say Dutch, even though I'm not totally comfortable with that just yet. I am at beginner stages of learning it. When you choose that secondary language, this doesn't automatically do it. But if you click this blue button, translate, how to draw becomes Don't listen to how I just said that because like I said, my Dutch is super beginner. I'm pretty sure I just <laughs> read that Dutch phrase with a Spanish accent. So don't judge me. Once you have it translated into Dutch or whatever language you're learning, you have a couple options. You can just do a search. But what I recommend, and you're gonna see why in a second, is this search as search for videos with subtitles, CC. Because, I'm gonna click that. These are all authentically Dutch YouTube videos, which is awesome. They're not just English speakers speaking Dutch. This is people from Dutch speaking countries who speak Dutch just making videos in Dutch. This is a whole other side of YouTube guys. This is pretty awesome. It's a great way to find vloggers for example who live and function in the language that you're learning. Great way to fake immersion. Let's dive into one of these videos and see the other things that language learning with YouTube does. Let's go into this first video. Apparently it's how to draw in Dutch. And there you have all of the Dutch subtitles for you to see. Just like with language learning with Netflix. Let's see if it does the same thing when you select ik. I know that ik is I in Dutch. Look at that, it does the exact same thing that it did with language learning with Netflix. <laughs> Not the best video for this. Um, you never know what you find on the internet. Again, you have the dictionaries, Glossby, Word Reference, Wiktionary, or Babla, which I've never heard of, but I'm definitely gonna check that out. You have all the same options. And on top of that, the thing that language learning with YouTube has that language learning with Netflix doesn't is you scroll down, look at all of these comments in Dutch. These are all these Dutch people who are just typing in Dutch because that's their language. You can go ahead and read them. You can't see the translations, unfortunately. You're gonna have to open up a new tab with a dictionary that you like to use, copy and paste, all that jazz. Or if you're at this level of the language that you're learning, this is great reading practice as well. Side note really quick, I did understand some of those comments and I'm really, really excited because my Dutch is super beginner, but apparently not as beginner as I thought. Remember, you can do this with literally any language. I'm assuming that more Western languages will be easier to find on YouTube. Think, are the people in this country able to access internet, phones, computers, things like that? Which is, to be fair, an interesting cultural experiment. Download language learning with YouTube and let me know what you find. I'm really interested in this extension. And like I said, language learning with Netflix, not language learning with Netflix, Language learning with YouTube is in beta mode. I'm really interested to see how it's improved upon when it's no longer in beta. And there you have it. That is everything that you need to know about using subtitles to learn a foreign language and how you can do it for absolutely free with no nothing. Now there is another option for using YouTube to learn a foreign language with subtitles. This video is already insanely long, so I didn't have any time to get to it. But if you want to check out captionpop.com, that is also another free option. If it would be helpful for me to go over captionpop.com and explore the similarities and differences between that and language learning with YouTube, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you every Monday at my blog at crushculture.com and every Wednesday right here on YouTube. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next week.